In honor of the new Mission Impossible movie today, we're going to be talking about spy technology and how to make some of your own. Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board, the show that makes science less about this and more about this. I'm your host, David Franklin, and today we're going to go stealth mode. There's obviously a big gap between movie technology and the technology we actually know exists in the real world, especially for spies. And today we're going to be comparing some movie technology to what we know actually exists. Okay, so we've all seen Mission Impossible or at least seen some sort of a spy movie like James Bond or heard about it or something. And they've got some wicked cool technology, but is all of it really possible? Well, we obviously can't test every piece of technology from every spy movie ever, but today we can go ahead and take a good stab at some of the big ones. And first up on the list is the Suction Cup Climber. Unfortunately, any suction cup that's strong enough to hold up a human being doesn't detach as easily as the ones from your shower do. Next up is James Bond's fingerprint gun that doesn't fire unless it's his fingerprint. And I'm really happy to bring this to you today because yes, it does exist. It's currently being developed by a fellow inventor. Next up is Batman's grappling hook gun and surprisingly, this one kind of exists. Grappling hook guns do at least. And just about anyone can make them if they have a shotgun and are willing to violate like 17 laws to make it and even retracting grappling hooks have been made. But the guns and the motors are both very big and very slow. And in Batman's case, he has a little pistol that's able to pull him up at really fast speeds and also has a barb that penetrates through basically just about anything. Not a good enough reason to use the word penetrate. Interestingly enough, the item on today's list that's most likely to be not real is James Bond's underwater car, but it is. This is the Rinspeed Scuba. The car is a Lotus Elise, but has been fitted with scuba tanks and special rear driving troll motors that slowly push the car with leather upholstery that I seriously hope had been sprayed with Neverwet. Seriously, seriously, look at this stuff. Look at that. I could do a whole episode on this. This is awesome. Now it's, now it's all over my pants and my feet. <laughs> and my iPad. So thank you, Rinspeed, for making my childhood dreams come true. And we're gonna finish the other items on our list, which you can see right here. But first, movie time. In the new Mission Impossible trailer and in the movie, you can see Tom Cruise running along and then grabbing onto a plane during flight and takeoff, but could he really do that? Tom Cruise weighs around 150 pounds or 77 kilograms. When I was doing pull-ups, I was able to pull myself up with an additional 100 pounds as well as hang with an additional 250. So let's go ahead and assume that you can hang with 2.5 times the weight that you can pull up. The world record for a weighted pull-up is 402 additional pounds, which means if Tom Cruise Super Spy was able to do a pull up with that kind of weight, just hanging around, he'd be able to support 1,375 pounds worth of force times 9.8 meters per second, because that's the acceleration at normal atmosphere and pressure. And he should be able to support around 6,100 newtons of force. In fact, most people on a plane experience anywhere from 1.8 to 2.5 Gs during takeoff, which means the acceleration is 2.5 times the normal 9.8. Since Tom Cruise isn't supporting any sort of weight here, he would weigh right around 77 kilograms his normal weight, but he would be experiencing 24.5 meters per second squared acceleration since it's 2.5 the normal Gs, which is a whole crap ton, but that's sort of like hanging with just 375 pounds, including your own body weight. It's not that big of a deal you could do it. So yeah, this is totally feasible. Good for you, Hollywood. It's rare. It's rare, but you're right. So what are some things that actually exist? Well, night vision goggles exist. There are many different forms of light radiation and we can see just a tiny little sliver called the visible light spectrum, but there are also radio waves, infrared, and gamma ray. And when things go dark at night, it's because a lot of the light radiation has disappeared, including our visible light spectrum. So what night vision goggles do is it collects more light from more parts of the spectrum, including infrared light, and then pieces it together into an image that the wearer can see. I can see. Say! No? I was wrong. 
Next on the list are guns that can shoot around corners. Technically, this isn't like Wanted where the bullets are curving or anything. That is utterly ridiculous. But one, they do have bullets that act like a two-stage rocket, which means once they've been launched out of the barrel of the gun, they still have an extra fuel tank that they can use to correct themselves in mid-flight. And two, they have guns that can shoot around corners. One, you could literally bend the barrel of a rifle and shoot it in a 90-degree angle and lose basically none of your speed. But that's pretty much useless the rest of the time. No one wants to be, you know, trying to shoot their victim over there like this once they can actually see around the corner. So the Israelis developed an assault rifle which has a handgun attached to the underside of the rail along with a small video camera. The lower half of the gun can actually be snapped to point in a different direction. The shooter gets a display on a video screen right in front of him of what the camera is pointing at and when they pull the trigger the gun sends a signal to the handgun to fire rather than to the rifle. <laughs> I know that you and I both have our unexplored childhood fantasies. I, for one, played Spy Kids in the first grade. That and I had my squad leader help me remove my two front teeth at recess to get a little extra money from the tooth fairy. So today we're gonna go ahead and build some simple spy gadgets that you can make at home without breaking the bank or yanking your teeth out for some extra gadget money. Before we begin, I'd like to take this moment to remind our audience not to do anything stupid with the things that they build today. Make sure to be careful, use common sense, any protection or precautions necessary to make sure that you and everyone else around you is as safe as possible and make sure to stay within the law. You may say, David, well aren't you doing this? Well yes, yes I am. But the difference is, I'm not wearing hockey pants. The first up is a lock pick. Maybe you can't grapple your way up onto the roof, but maybe you could just, you know, unlock the door and take the stairs. When lock picking, you need two things. You need a rake and you need a tension wrench. First, take a paper clip, bend it so that it doubles up in thickness, and then bend it at a 90 degree angle so that one side takes up about two thirds of the length and the other side takes up the other third. This will be your angle wrench. Now take another paper clip, wad it up on one side, leave about an inch and a half exposed, and then with the remaining quarter inch on the tip of the paper clip, bend it into three waves. This will be your rake. When you're lock picking, make sure that you insert the tension wrench first so that the lock always thinks you're trying to turn it so that if you do unlock it with the rake, it just pops open. And then kind of bounce the rake up and down because your goal is to knock the pins on a lock upwards just like a normal key would. Next up is the periscope, and I don't know that I'm exactly authorized to how to teach anyone to make a gun that fires around corners, but I can teach you how to make a telescope that sees above walls and around corners. You can take basically any milk carton, put two mirrors on the inside that bounce off of each other at a 45 degree angle, and voila, you have yourself a periscope. The image comes in, bounces off one, comes down, bounces off the other, and comes to your eye. Kinda like the corner shot, but without being able to kill people. And if you thought I was gonna teach you how to kill people, I'm not. I don't trust people on the internet. And you shouldn't either. Four men in vans with candy. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. If you like what you saw, go ahead and like and share this video with a friend or a family member. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to tune in next week when we talk about genetic mutations and superpowers in honor of the new Fantastic Four movie. And this is a reminder to go ahead and actually check out Fantastic Four, the new Mission Impossible James Bond Spectre when it comes out in the future. Also, I'd like to remind our audience not to pick any locks that aren't yours. Not to creep on your older sister's hot friend because if you do, you'll probably get some of this or some of this and I'll probably get some of this. And when they pull a trigger, the gun sends a signal to the handgun to the fire rather than to the rank. I'd like to say I never wet myself, but you know, occasionally. Oh crap. Oh crap, that's, oh my god, that's cold. And one last reminder to our audience, fingers off when you're not shooting, even if it's a laser gun. And pinkies up when you are.